No more custom middleware needed for exception handling in C Sharp with .NET 8. Hit the subscribe button and stay tuned to find out the best way of adding exception handling in your .NET project. We're first going to throw an exception in our ASP.NET Core Web API. And to do that, we're going to add a new controller. We're going to select API controller and we're going to call it error controller. Next, we're going to set up an endpoint. We're going to call it index. And within that, we're going to throw an exception. So the exception message will read, this is not going to work. We'll add the HTTP GET verb to it and run the application to test it. When running our API endpoint, we can see that we're getting the exception. And as part of the response, we're getting all the debug information as part of the response. Now, this is good for development, but for production, it poses security issues, particularly if it ends up in the wrong hands. Now, there are a few ways to change the response if an exception has occurred. We can write our own custom middleware. We can also use the use exception handler, which is part of the web application type. This passes in a parameter of iApplicationBuilder, which has a run method. This in turn has a HTTP context type, which means we can change the response. So we're going to update the status code. We're going to set it as 500. We can also update the content type. And for that, we're going to set it as text.html. We can also update the response that comes when running the endpoint. So for that, we're going to set that as an error has occurred. When running that endpoint, we're still getting the exception. But when we look at the response, we can see that we're just getting the message that says an error has occurred. We're not getting all the debug information. Now that way we'll continue to work with .NET 8 projects. But with .NET 8, you can write your own exception handler, which I'll show you how to do. To do that, we go to add new item, and we're going to call it my exception handler. The my exception handler needs to implement the I exception handler interface, and that requires a method. So we need this try handle async method, which passes in a HTTP context, an exception, and a cancellation token. We need to mark it as async, and we can copy our code from the exception handler into it. We'll change the type from context to HTTP context. And we can either return true or false. Now, if we have more than one exception handler, if it returns false, it will try the next exception handler and keep on doing that. If we return true, it won't run any of the other exception handlers. After that, we need to register it as part of the builder. So we call builder.services add exception handler and as the generic type we're adding the class of my exception handler as a result we no longer need that let's put a breakpoint here to make sure it's going to work and run the application just to note that if you're using the development exception page in your application you'll need to remove this line from the program.cs file that is because the development exception page will take precedence over any exception handling middleware and therefore won't work properly So we execute the endpoint, we can see we're getting the exception. We can see it's now going into our exception handler, so we know that's working. And when we have a look at the response, we can still see that it's coming back with an error has occurred. I said earlier when running the try handle async method in the exception handler, if it returns false, it will look for any other exception handlers that are registered to the application and run them. Let's give that a test create a new exception handler, which we're going to call my exception to handler. We need to remember to implement the I exception handler interface. And we can copy and paste the try handle async method that appears in the my exception handler. Let's place a breakpoint in there and change this to return false. Place a breakpoint for that. We need to register the new exception handler into the application. We're going to do it underneath the my exception handler. So the my exception handler will run first. And if that returns false, then it will go to the my exception to handler. Running our endpoint, we're getting the exception. It's going through the my exception handler first and it's returning false. 
So it goes to the My Exception 2 handler and runs that exception handler. And we can also see that we're getting the same response type saying an error has occurred. Watch our video next on how to update to .NET 8. We'll show you how to update Visual Studio and download the SDK. In addition, we'll show you how to create and upgrade an existing project to .NET 8.